Welcome everyone to Montgomery County's Engage at Home, brought to you by the county's caregiver support program. Today's program is focused on the county's Dementia Friendly America initiative. We have a number of speakers and we also have the county's Dementia Friendly Action Team. Today you are going to learn about Dementia Friendly America its impact in Montgomery County, and also some of the ways that you as a community member can be focused on being dementia friendly. So let's start the program. Our first speaker today is Odile Brunetto, the Chief of Montgomery County's Aging and Disability Services. Welcome Odile. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. It is quite a pleasure to be reunited today after so many months apart. I was just reflecting a few minutes ago that in Montgomery County, we started our Dementia Friendly Initiative five years ago. And clearly so much has happened over the past five years. A lot of accomplishments. We have developed a network and an infrastructure to get things done to assist families and persons with dementia in our community. And we are very proud to belong to an international movement that was started in Europe many years ago and came to the United States. And Montgomery County was the second county in the state of Maryland to join the Dementia Friendly Initiative. And over the month, we have really been able to focus on assisting persons living with dementia and their caregivers. And we're gonna hear some more details uh, in a few minutes about that. Clearly at this moment, we are all very concerned about the safety of our family members, our colleagues and neighbors and friends. And uh, we all are very aware that the virus has been uh, very difficult on persons with uh, various medical challenges, older persons, and also persons who are from uh, diverse communities, such as our friends, neighbors, family members who are from a Hispanic background or an African-American background. And so Montgomery County is uh, focusing in the areas of the county where we have a high density of positive uh, cases for the COVID-19 virus. And so uh, we are encouraging everyone to go and take a test, uh, even if you are not uh, having any symptoms. Uh, the tests are provided at no cost, and you do not need a physician's referral. Also, for those persons who live in some designated uh, zip code with a high um, incidence of COVID, we are able to have a team come into your home, if you wish, and provide the test right there and there, so you don't have to travel uh, to a site. So if you are interested in this service, uh, the service is provided by a company called Rapid Response and the county has a, has a contract with them. Uh, please contact our main line 240-777-3000 and we can provide you some additional guidelines. And um, again, if you have any other concerns or questions about a person uh, that is in your family who is either an older adult or a person with disability, please contact us at the same number, 240-777-3000. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Odile. It's always heartening to know that Montgomery County is really stepping up to the challenges associated with COVID and embracing such national best practices as Dementia Friendly America. So, I think it's time that we introduce our first speaker. Michael Buckley is a member of the Montgomery County Dementia Friendly Initiative Action Team and works with Bright Focus Foundation. Welcome, Michael, and I look forward to hearing your presentation. Thanks, so I really enjoyed working with you over the last five years. Bright Focus Foundation is a nonprofit. We are based in Clarksburg, Up County. And we have been around for about 45 years. And what Bright Focus Foundation does is it supports uh, scientific research all around the world to find better treatments and hopefully a cure for Alzheimer's disease, macular degeneration, and glaucoma. And then we take this, this findings from research and a lot of the best practices from the field of medicine and share these all free of charge 
with families that are impacted by these diseases. In terms of Alzheimer's, we're currently supporting over 130 projects around the world to try to end this disease. And it was through our, our, our national network of Alzheimer's research and, and advocacy groups that we first heard of Dementia Friendly America and how it was um, started and, and thriving in the state of Minnesota and efforts to, to, to make it uh, a, a national campaign. And it was just so immediately exciting and at just some level, just the right thing to do from a policy and a moral and a human standpoint. And uh, we became involved and we still are involved in the National Board of Directors for the, the National Dementia Friendly Campaign. But we felt really strongly to try to launch it, uh, help support it here in Montgomery County where we've always had a very uh, strong progressive government and a very strong commitment to healthcare and science and, and community. So about um, five or six years ago, we reached out to Montgomery County government um, through Lilly and, and Odile and others. And, and it's just been a tremendously, tremendously exciting partnership. And what I hope that Bright Focus has been able to do to help Montgomery County on dementia friendly is a couple different things. One is take some of the lessons and um, experiences that we've learned through the National Dementia Friendly America campaign and share those with local uh, government and, and non-government uh, leaders that are involved in the county's dementia-friendly efforts. Because it's one of the most impressive things about Dementia-Friendly America campaign is how flexible it is and how applicable it is to, to a local community. We have seen uh, communities across the country train local bus drivers to be better aware for signs of wandering, uh, train wait staff in local restaurants to uh, help customers that need some assistance, work with local law enforcement and financial institutions to keep a better eye out for, for customers at the, at, the, at the teller window at a bank or credit union who either might need a little more assistance or maybe there are uh, some transactions that might need a, 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 good, a good second look. So it, it's such a, a flexible there's, uh, environment that we're able to bring some of these examples from across the country to, to Montgomery County to offer these uh, as suggestions. And then secondly, as a, uh, uh, as a Montgomery County PACE organization, we've been able to open our doors at our Clarksburg uh, headquarters to, to the county, to, to the local government, to the business community, chambers of commerce and others, to come to Bright Focus and have a, a chance in a, a warm, neutral setting to, uh, to learn more about Dementia Friendly America, to train the trainer activities to help to help uh, uh, spread the words. So it's just been a tremendously positive experience. Um, obviously, the, the pandemic is a huge challenge, and uh, I'm not a frontline service provider, so I'm not an expert on how to uh, best continue a lot of these programs. But I think that to me, the pandemic underscores the need for why dementia-friendly communities are, are more important than ever. Um, I've heard it described that isolation and loneliness are the pandemic, are the pandemics within the pandemic, where the ability to reach uh, people who need assistance, people who face loneliness or food insecurity, it, it, it's greater than ever. So the ability of Dementia Friendly America to bring the public and private sector sectors in Montgomery County and in communities across the country, to bring that together, I, I think is, is more important than ever. And briefly I'll tell you a little bit about Bright Focus Foundation uh, and what we can uh, offer free of charge to anybody in Montgomery County or, or elsewhere. Um, with a lot of materials uh, to help families that are impacted by these diseases, um, uh, you know, expert articles about signs and symptoms and diagnosis, questions to ask your doctor, um, guides for, for managing caregiving stress. Uh, we particularly want to emphasize clinical trials because I think clinical trials are a term that we've all heard, but most of us don't really understand them. And it's usually a box at the bottom of the sheet at the doctor's office that you instinctively check no when it says for, for clinical trials. And what we find at Bright Focus is that we're supporting over 130 projects around the world right now for Alzheimer's. A lot of the, the, the potential cures face delays uh, and, and, and bottlenecks uh, because of lack of volunteers for, for clinical trials. So I think clinical trials are an opportunity from a, a, a citizenship standpoint 
to have an opportunity to be a part of a cure. And obviously, again, clinical trials is a complicated topic. It's something that's best discussed, you know, with your family and with your physician. So Bright Focus has several resources to help with that. We have a free publication called Clinical Trials, Your Questions Answered, that lays out in a very value neutral tone um, how clinical trials work and things to, to, to talk about. We have a clinical trial finder uh, widget on our website where you type in basic information about yourself and, and where you live and it, and it finds uh, clinical trials in your area. So there's all sorts of resources that are available at brightfocus.org and also uh, by calling us at 1-800-437-2423. Again, that's brightfocus.org, 1-800-437-2423. You can learn more about clinical trials. We have new articles on our website every month to help families that are impacted by Alzheimer's, as well as macular degeneration and glaucoma. We have basic fact sheets, have all sorts of material that, that, that's available free of charge. And, and um, you know, Lily, just to, to, to conclude, I just want to say it's just been such a, a positive experience to, to work, with, work with Montgomery County and the, the county leadership uh, on this as well, you know, to, we've had opportunities to showcase to the National Dementia Friendly America effort, um, the work that's being done here, particularly um, in the law enforcement community and, and, and elsewhere. It's just been a tremendously positive experience. Obviously, we're facing unprecedented, unimaginable challenges moving forward. Uh, taking care of our of our population uh, during the pandemic, but again, I just think this makes it more relevant than ever. Um, when you hear that 10,000 Americans turn 65 every day, you realize how much this country is changing and what that means for um, for families, for businesses, for local governments, and it, it's you know, I believe Montgomery County and many other places are at a tipping point where they'll, uh, if not now, soon will have more senior citizens than school-aged children. So clearly the, the demographic, the tectonic plates of our society are changing and people will need more support as they, as they grow older. And Alzheimer's is only going to grow in numbers as our population ages, unless we're able to support scientific research, unless we're able to better educate the public that Dementia is not an inevitable part of getting old. Actions that have been strongly supported by science that can really help healthy aging, that's, that's physical exercise, social stimulation, intellectual stimulation, uh, good cardiovascular health and diet. All these things are so important. I think they're so important as part of a dementia-friendly community. Um, they're very challenging right now, but I think that, that dementia-friendly America is, is is a very positive activity up in the backdrop of a disease that is, is very challenging. It's one of science's most challenging uh, problems to solve. It's one of society's most um, difficult problems to solve. There's a lot of stigma that I think limits the, the really good conversations like we're, we're having today from being, from being better known. But I think Dementia Friendly America really provides a, um, a ray of light uh, on a disease that that's very difficult and now in a in a pandemic that that makes it even harder so just want to say thanks so much to to montgomery county for for i said was uh being one of the believe in the first 10 communities in the nation to become dementia friendly and at bright focus we're just thrilled to be a part of it and look forward to to doing that for many years to come so thank you lily and thank you um, everyone at montgomery county it's so wonderful to have this information about de dementia friendly America and how Bright Focus has played a leadership role in Montgomery County. Michael shared a whole lot of resources, websites and phone numbers. I will be including those in the description for this Engage at Home episode. Our next guest is Officer Laurie Reyes. Officer Reyes is a member of Montgomery County's police and she's part of our Dementia Friendly Action Team Public Safety Team. Laurie has been working for many years on supports for caregivers and our vulnerable population, and as part of our Dementia Friendly program, has been developing tools to assist our community. 
Welcome, Laurie. Hi, there is Lily Wissang. I am Officer Lori Reyes, and we have worked with uh, Dementia Friendly America for the last five years. But even before that, I was the coordinator of our Montgomery County Police Autism, IDD, which is Intellectual Developmental Disabilities, Alzheimer's and Dementia Outreach Program. And the reason the program began was in response to the sometimes overwhelming calls our police officers received the, for individuals who are what we call critically at risk missing persons or fines. So it's where we, in most cases, we locate an individual who has dementia or Alzheimer's even before the very best of caregivers realize that they're missing. So as I mentioned, we, we average about three to eight of those a week. That's how the program began where we would have either a police officer or a community member notice that somebody was maybe disoriented or confused and they would contact um, they would contact the police and we would then have to figure out where this person where this person had wandered from so again the program began that way but what we realized is that we needed to do more we needed to do more than just respond to these calls we needed to address why they were happening, how we could prevent them, and how we could be a source of support for families that were caring for individuals who had dementia and Alzheimer's. So the program expanded. We began to educate all of our police officers, the incoming recruits, the current officers. We educate individuals, caregivers, and of course, our most important, the community, to how they could help us. So the program, continue to expand. And myself and the co-coordinator, Officer Tara Bond, began giving presentations uh, in, in, on safety and awareness for wandering. Last year, we probably had close to about 200 presentations or trainings that we provided um, to community members, other police agencies, individuals, you name it. Uh, myself and Tara are always available to talk about safety and awareness in the dementia community. Then we have our follow-up piece. So myself, Officer Bond, and other officers will go to a home following an episode of wandering or elopement. And the very first thing we say to caregivers is, we know that you have a lot on your plate. We know that you're trying to manage your, your own, sometimes work or family. And we know that you have a lot on your plate. So we're not, in most cases, we're not even judging that family member or that caregiver for the fact that the loved one has eloped. We're saying, you're not alone. We're here for you. And here are some resources that we can provide you. We can refer you to other um, agencies, uh, other social service agencies, to our Dementia Friendly America resources. And then the other part of our program is our response. And this dovetails with a follow-up because when you call 911 because your loved one is missing, you have a police force that's educated, that's compassionate. And in many cases, you have a police officer who may have a loved one themselves that is impacted with Alzheimer's or dementia. So the response piece is, is very robust. And we always convey to family members that, you know, you may think, wow, you know, all these police officers searching for my relative, I feel so bad, I feel like I've dropped the ball. But that's not what our officers are thinking. Our officers are thinking all we want to do is find your loved one and bring them home safely. And while maintaining that individual's dignity and, and making sure that, you know, that we don't make them feel bad or, or, or feel as if they have done something wrong. So our response piece, all of that goes together. And our message to family members has always been that you're not alone on this journey. So for, for us in Montgomery County, we express that because caregivers feel as if, you know, obviously, like I said, they're just caring for, they're managing so much. And especially right now in the age of, you know, we're, we're dealing with a pandemic, you have family members that are trying to work and trying to again juggle all in the middle of a pandemic. So what I want to say today and what Officer Tara Bond and, and I both want to say to you is this. In the last couple of months, even, even before that, but especially in the last couple of months, we've seen 
a lot of times where we are finding the individuals and family members for many different re reasons have not contacted us. The sooner that you call 911 when your loved one is missing, the better. Even if you call us right back and say, we found them, they were just down the street, we were fine with that. But the number one safety technique or the safety tool is to call 911 immediately if your loved one is missing. Be very open and honest about how long that person has been missing. Make sure that you provide the uh, call taker from 911 all of the information related to your loved one. And then when officers are on scene, relay it again to them. Where might your loved one go? Where are some recent interests that they've had? Yeah, so num calling 911 is the number one most important tool. The other thing that we suggest is getting your loved one some type of identification bracelet. In order for us to have that un reunification process, we need to be able to identify your loved one. And oftentimes they aren't able to do that. They aren't able to tell us their address or a phone number or even a very basic name. If your loved one has some type of identification bracelet, we, we personally like the roadid.com style because it can be cut to fit. And it doesn't have to say a diagnosis. It can just have a couple of cell phone numbers and maybe their first name. And sometimes Officer Bond and I suggest that you don't get that just for the loved one who has dementia. You get that for both spouses or both the caregiver and the person who has dementia so that they don't feel isolated or singled out and so that the person with dementia sees you wearing the bracelet and they have that association. So the bracelet for us is so important to have that quick reunification. Another couple of safety tips is consider getting alarms of some type on the doors and windows of the home. It can be just a chime, something to let you know that a door has been opened or a window has been opened. Especially important in the overnight hours when the phenomenon of sundowning is so common, meaning individuals with dementia getting their days and nights confused. They leave in the middle of the night and you could sleep right through it if there's not an alarm on your door. We also recommend, if you feel comfortable, letting your neighbors be aware that your loved one has dementia. We have a neighbor letter that's on our website and you can provide that, again, if you feel comfortable sharing your loved one's diagnosis. You just tell your neighbors, listen, my loved one has a propensity, they may wander or elope, it's okay to call my cell phone, meaning the, the loved one's cell phone, and let them know that you've found them. Or it's also okay to call 911 and say, I found my, my neighbor's husband and he has dementia and I can't get in touch with him. It's okay to call 911. So that's at the individual caregiver's comfort level, of sharing that information with neighbors. And we also recommend that you convey to anybody who's caring for your loved one that there it is okay to call 911 if they are missing meaning siblings a caregiver in the home tell them it's okay to call 911 as well give them that empowerment and that authority to call 911 so that's some of our tips um, our website lily will provide uh, on the website is my cell phone number as well as my email which is usually the best to get in touch and some other resources um, on there so we're available for you and you're not alone on this journey thank you thank you lily thank you laurie that was an amazing presentation and it really helps to emphasize for our community that this is a partnership and it's one where we want them to feel comfortable contacting us. So we have a number of members of Montgomery County's Dementia Friendly Action Team with us. I'm going to introduce them and ask them to share some of their wisdom. Janet, welcome. Thank you. I'm very, very happy to be a part of this amazing team and for us to be able to share our work with all of the folks in Montgomery County. My name is Janet Carter. I am the Senior Vice President of Operations at Larmax Homes, which is a company that has five small residential assisted living homes in Montgomery County. And I'm also a social worker. I would say I would echo 
what Michael said so eloquently in regards to this sense of isolation. I think inherently when we are caregivers, there is a sense of isolation that comes from our work. In addition to have that additional component of a pandemic makes this even more challenging. But I'd like for us to think about changing that idea and instead looking at this as an opportunity for us as caregivers to be able to create a network that is remote. Oftentimes caregivers could not leave their houses anyway in order to care for their loved one properly. So this is an opportunity for our resources to finally come to you. I would encourage you to think about what are these ways that are happening in response to our pandemic that will allow you to bring more into your home for your loved one. Whether it's from an opera organization, a museum, the national parks, there are so many ways that you can now be a part of the greater world remotely. We are happy to help all of us in any way to share resources with all of you, but I would encourage you to think outside the box. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Um, I'd like to now introduce my colleague, Sean, who works with me in aging and disability. I just wanted to add uh, first to Janet's comment that um, the county has created a page on its website uh, that is called Thrive at Home. And on that page, you'll find a lot of the resources that Janet referred to, like opportunities to view museums you know around the world or other ways to connect with people or to be, stay stimulated uh, while you're staying at home and staying safe so just montgomerycountymd.gov which is the county's website slash thrive t-h-r-i-v-e and you will find the thrive at home a site that has all kinds of online resources so encourage folks to take advantage of that um, because my focus is traditionally transportation, I just want to remind folks that there are options for people, escorted transportation options that are offered um, through county programs as well as from uh, private providers. And to get information about that, I encourage people to call Connect a Ride which is a program Jewish Council for the Aging operates on behalf of Montgomery County to benefit all county residents um, who are older adults and people with disabilities who need some support with finding appropriate transportation. So the number there to call is 301-738-3252. And the last thing I wanted to say was just to remind folks about Aging and Disability Services key phone number if folks are struggling in any way, please feel free to call us. It's 240-777-3000. And folks who have been in this work for a very long time, most of them over 10 years, will be happy to talk with you about the challenges that you're facing and find ways to, to find some support out in the community. So thank you. Thank you, Sean. Um, Another member of the Dementia Friendly Action Team is Tara Bond. She is also a colleague of Laurie Rias. Tara, do you have some words of wisdom? Thank you, Lily. Yes. Um, it's hard to follow Lori Reyes because she's so amazing. Um, but yes, I'm one of the co-coordinators of our program. And I'm just super excited that Lori came up with this idea. I've been working with her in the program for seven years. And then outside of that, I'm also a community services officer in the Rockville district. Um, but one thing I wanted to just kind of echo her sentiments or maybe just expand on is that you are not alone. In Montgomery County, you are so fortunate to be in such an amazing county that has so many resources available. So please take advantage of those. We're here for you. We want you to utilize them and know that you're not alone. Again, as Lori said, if you're ever struggling, you can always reach out to Lori or myself. I'm sure um, Lily can make that information available to you with our email addresses. But in the event there's a crisis or your loved one is missing, please do not hesitate to give us a call. Um, we're here to help. We as a police department are here to assist in ensuring that your loved one stays safe, as well as doing all we can do and partnering with the Dementia Friendly America Initiative to ensure that we're enriching your loved one's lives as well that are dealing with and living with Alzheimer's and dementia. And I'm just super happy to be here today to have the opportunity to be with you all and speak. So thank you, Lily. Thank you so much. 
So we are nearing the end of our time together for this program. I'd like to now welcome back Michael Buckley and if he would mind sharing some final words. Yeah, thanks, Lily. I think it's been a great conversation today. That's been a reminder that as the county addresses the growing numbers of people with Alzheimer's and dementia, that this truly is a community-wide approach that will help people age well and age safely, and that Alzheimer's isn't the medical community's problem or the aging department's problem or any one you know part of our government or community. That this is such a, a complex, widespread challenge that the community faces. It's something like we've seen today at the Dementia Friendly America where we have such a broad swath of the community coming together. I really think that that's the, the, the best approach forward for, for, the, for the county to, to deal with something like uh, the, the health and well-being of our growing senior population. Mm. Thank you so much. Um, Officer Reyes, um, I'd like to now welcome you to just share some final words. So I think, again, what we always say is you're, you're not alone on this journey and I can't stress it enough. Please, please don't hesitate to call 911 if your loved one is in crisis, if you are in crisis, if you need us, we're here for you and we're here to support you. And thank you so much. Thank you for hosting us, Lily. Thank you. Thank you. So to wrap up this conversation, we have heard about Montgomery County's Dementia Friendly Initiative, and you've also been given the challenge to reach out to the resources that are available to you in Montgomery County. You've heard about the county's Aging and Disability Resource Unit, and that number is 240-777-3000. I also want to remind everyone that the county has a caregiver blog which lists virtual support groups that are available for a range of illnesses, diseases, and for the requirements of our caregivers. That link will be included in the description where you found this episode. This has been an Engage at Home episode specifically for National Caregiver Month. Thank you for joining us. And as always, I remind you all to stay well and calm.